Great. Hello, welcome to the, po- the Paprika. Blah. Hey, welcome to the Paprika Podcast Show. I'm David Hewlett, and I'm here today with Jordan Perry. What up? What up? What up? So hey. glad to be here. Yeah. Thanks for coming on. I'm glad that you. Uh, we're gonna do. Let's do a little split screen. A little splitsy. A little split. Oh, split roo. Wait. Crap. Go. Yeah. All right. There we go. We got our split screen. We've got our our name tags. What's up, dude? Thanks for coming in. I, I had to get you in because you're about to move away. About to leave. You're moving. You're going to New York City. New York, New York. Leaving Las Vegas. Tell us about that. Tell us about because you haven't been here for that long. No, I've been here like a year, and right. I'm uh, already going, leaving Las Vegas, moving to New York. I'm going to be in the Bronx. But I had to stop by your podcast first. Yeah, I had to you know make my final final rounds, do yeah. all the all the hot podcasts here in Vegas comedy scene. All of them. Is there other ones? There There's... really aren't that many. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I've learned. That's the thing is that there should be a, a thriving podcast network. If you're a comedian, you don't have a podcast. You're an idiot. You right. should just put you, whatever your thoughts you have, put them on the internet, so that we can build some type of following. Something, right? Something. I, I, quality is something I'm figuring out, but volume is what I'm, I'm focusing on. That's because the key. I've, I've done, I think I've done as many as four, and like I've had, I'm trying to combine them. Really? Right? So, for example, Trez, Steve Henry, and Dan Hall all play golf together. Ooh, that's a good one. So, I would have each one of them do their own episode. Yeah. I believe I've got, yeah, I've had all three of them. On there, so now I've got to have all of them at once. All of them at once. So you get to see the individual, realize how you know how weird is is Steve on his own, how weird is Dan on his own, how right. weird is Trez. And then the you're relationships, like, the dynamics. That's what people want to buy into. Yeah. This is like when you're driving or when you got nothing to do, you want to listen to some people and feel like you got friends. Right. That's the idea. I had another idea too. Right. So uh, this one was going to be so I I do I one with Kevin Winnie. Uh-huh. Do you know Kevin? Yeah, yeah. So Kevin, I guess before I even got into comedy, he's been out of it for a while, but he was he started at the same time Angie Crum did. Mhm. And so he's kind one of, of like, like original people in this scene. Right. He's yeah. like an original, he's like an OG Vegas guy. Right, right. And uh then he had like a drug problem and he dropped out for a while. He has some issues and now he came back. He got his shit together and it now happens, he's, you know. And, yeah, and yeah. he's hustling. This was he's years ago. He's a good ago. guy now. And so is Kevin um and I say that to say this. It was Kevin and then have the controversial Ty Rivera on. <laughs> yeah, I've been trying to get Ty. He's he's busy, I guess. I see him right. every Thursday. But right. then, um, <laughs> I do. I play piano for his, right. his show, right? Right. But, um, but you know, he's... Uh, Ty, come do uh, David's podcast, man. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> he, he said he would. He said he would, yeah. but I'm having trouble locking him down. Well, for, anyway, so there's he'll, him. He'll, 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 when the time is right, he'll, he'll make an appearance. I know. I know. Ty is... Uh, it's like when you're fishing, like you can't make the fish, like right. bite, get your worm. You know no. what I mean? You got to just put that it in the code water. Code for Ty sucking your dick. Is that why he doesn't want to come on? It, you just want him to suck your dick? It's code for uh, fishing. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm fishing <laughs> for uh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, you can't well, get it. Ty. If you want to come on the podcast or get his worm, you know where to come. All right. He said it here. He sent to a microphone. It's recorded. It's documented. It's out there. I double dog dare you to come get this bait, son. That's what. You- <laughs> That's what we're doing. Yeah. We're baiting the hooks up in the Hewlett <laughs> apartment. So, uh, get the tackle box. I have a lot of fishing references. I mm. think I fished a lot. Are you a fisher man I, person? I, I was never a hunter, but I was a fisherman. I don't think you can call yourself a hunter if all you do is fish. I agree. Yeah, I agree. you're not a hunter. Hunting's a totally different thing. Yeah. I grew up in Mississippi, and I was a Ooh. Boy Scout. Okay. So, I had a lot of... Uh, experience hiking and all my friends hunted and everything but mm. my family was never into that i was just kind of around it but i've been to like uh i we did a couple of trips to canada where we're canoeing oh and wow carrying our canoes i'm like 15 that's awesome and, yeah it's dope and carrying our canoes from lake to lake and then we're fishing and we're catching all these fish yeah and we're eating them and so that's where i learned a little bit about you know serious like fishing to eat you know mm. what i mean fishing yeah, in yeah. the wild but uh, yeah i was always like a fisherman it was never um too serious about any of that stuff but anyway coming back so kevin winnie ty rivera and 
Diaz Mackey. All why those three? Why these? Why these threesomes that you're concocting in your head? The access of evil. The access of evil. <laughs> I really want to do that show. Tyra Rivera, Kevin Winnie, and who else was Diaz Mackey? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah that's pretty evil. <laughs> I was like, who's a who are the who? Are the, well, this is what happened. Um, I had. Well, I, I wanted to build a podcast and have it make have some co- cohesion to it. You know, yeah. I saw what Ty was doing where he's talking about like l- big issues in the news and like local gossip. Right, concept. right, right. So I'm like, okay, th- there is there is something to that as far as how to retain an audience and how to build a following. So I'm like, it's got to have some mm. strategy of some kind, right? Because I listen to it because sometimes he brings up me or he brings up you know <laughs> right, whoever. Right, right. I'm like, I don't know. I want to. I want to see who's gonna say. Right. You know. And, but uh, isn't it just about putting it out there and then people buy into it? It's I, like when you want to be a car salesman or any type of salesman. It's like you can have all these strategies and I'll. Do, 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 but when people are in the end of the day, they're buying. It's you. Your yeah. personality is what sells it. But see, people need cars. No one gives a fuck about podcasts. I think that's... You know? I don't know. I feel like people are craving content more than ever. Yeah? Like you said, doom scrolling. That's all people do all it's day, all every day. It's all doom scroll right now. I'm yeah. trying to get in that doom scroll. Right? I'm trying to get some... Get the, Explore page. Pick us up. Got to get in the algorithm. And I, I mostly I got to chop... I just... It's the editing side. Mm. Chop it it's up. A lot. But... If you can't afford to hire someone, that's cool. But again, it's like do it yourself. Just just buckle down and do it yourself. That's what I'm finding. Yeah. Well, you know? this is what happens is that even if you can hire somebody, the quality you have to know how to do it yourself yeah, true, anyway. True. So you might as well do it for do it on your own yeah. from the beginning and then hire somebody when you can tell them exactly what needs to happen because right. you don't really know. And you'll know, you'll have the language and you'll have a better understanding of like, okay, I told them to do this and it's been 12 hours. That's like two hours. Where you know, where the hell is the edit? Yeah. Like you'll understand. The conductor in the orchestra needs to know how to play all the instruments. That's true. But the boss of the company doesn't have to Did you get that from the, the Steve Jobs movie? No. Uh-uh. He says that in the movie, Steve Jobs movie with the one with uh, Michael Fassbender. Okay. Because he's like, uh, they're in an orchestra hall. It's him and Waz. And then Waz is like, what instrument do you play? And he's like, I'm the conductor. I yep. play the orchestra. Right, right. <laughs> but they that is what they have to do. I, I think in order to become a conductor, you have to know. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you, you have to know. To... I mean, I don't think they can sit there and play like, as well as everyone else. But they right. understand each instrument probably. Yeah. yeah. Like, like the... that. I don't know, like the sensei needs to be able to do all the techniques. You That's know true. what I mean? If you're teaching mixed martial arts, like I found myself having to coach. Like I had to learn how to do some of the stuff too. Like mm. I had been a fighter for a while, but I didn't know how to box exactly. Really? I didn't know how to wrestle. I never been a, I had had lots of boxing matches, but never like a real box, like against a real boxer. It's these kind of like fights. Like I don't know, I did a lot of tough man stuff. Some of them were trained, but for the most part it was just the style of boxing you're just right. fine but I did a lot I did a lot I did, I did formal like mixed martial arts but as a coach I had to like learn how to wrestle like mm. I, I found myself on YouTube looking at uh, this it's like the, the division one syllabus for o- Oklahoma State wrestling <laughs> yeah they have like their syllabus it's just right. a bunch of techniques They're like this is how you hold your hands right. this is how you step to the side speaking you know? of fighting yeah what are your thoughts on Jake Paul and Anderson Silva that's happening right is Isn't that it happening I believe it's happening all right, yeah. So Jake Paul is a influencer. Yeah. Right, and he can probably fight, but personally, I think that knockout against Tyron Woodley was a work. I don't. I don't think. I don't think hmm. that. Maybe. I just, it, it, this is how I gauge it, right? This is how I gauge if there was. It's like how cartoonish is the event in general? Mm-hmm. Pretty fucking cartoonish. True. Right, and then what? Do you stand to lose? What is the people who's writing the checks? True. What do they stand to gain versus lose from things going one way or another? Right. How much money are they working with? Because if you're looking at the Paul brothers, Mm -hmm. you're dealing with they bought a fuck ton of, you know, not only do they also just even logically, if you're Tyron Woodley, let's say Jake gets lucky and just catches you on the side and you weren't expecting it and you are down the ground. What makes you want to get back up? 
you want to box again? You're you're, you're, he, you're not you're not looking to box again. Yeah, was, you get you get your you've already been paid. It was so dramatic, and I, I just don't buy it. I just I just don't like wh- you look at what Tyron Woodley had to gain versus lose mm-hmm. from that fight, and if look if Jake had been like, look, man, I'm gonna throw you three mil in the back door. Right. All you got to do, we're gonna work out. We're gonna just do a dive. Right. You know. See, I think that's what happened with the UFC and Kimbo Slice, hmm. because Kimbo was very unprepared to compete in mixed martial arts. Right. And I believe that, and then he was he was going with who Ken Shamrock, who's supposed to go with, who's known for doing works in pro wrestling. Hmm. We have Tank Abbott, who he fought, who's known for doing works in pro wrestling. That's all on Elite XC. Hmm. And the reason he got fucked up is because he ended up having to fight. Ken Shamrock cut himself in the locker room right before. Hmm. The Elite XC had banked all their money on Kimbo Slice being like their hero, mm-hmm. but they found that even though he was so hugely famous and brought a crowd, he wasn't that good at mixed martial arts. Right. He's a good fighter, good right. boxer, but he's not that good at mixed martial arts. He's just too old to get good at that shit now. Right. He was like 45 or whatever. Right. And he had his fight with... Uh, I forget the dude's name, but he was he had the, the red hair and he's like a karate guy. And that dude stepped in like... 20 minutes Damn. before the fight because they didn't want to save the card. Right. And Shamrock had cut himself warming up. And so Shamrock dropped out last minute. They put this other guy in. This dude's just a, a regular yeah. kickboxer. Right. And he knocked him out. Right. Kind of easily. Right. And it this sank the whole organization. Damn. But then he gets on the ultimate fighter because he's a money bag, right? Right. But he's not. He, look, he got beat by a dude who wasn't ranked in a lower weight class. Right. You know, he got when he was supposed to fight Shamrock. Who, I don't know, man. I'm, like I'm still on the fence about how good Ken Shamrock is at MMA because he's so old school and he's great at pancreas. But there's always the steroid issue. There's always the level of competition issue. Right. There's all this other stuff with uh, Shamrock. But then when he got into the Ultimate Fighter, huge Ultimate Fighter. It was the heavyweight season, I think season ten or so. The one with Brendan Schaub. Right. And, uh, yeah, I saw. I saw the highlights of that season. Right, and uh, hugely rated, but of course he gets taken out pretty right. quick in the competition. Then I he mean, goes, he was what forties when he was doing Kimbo? when he yeah. was doing Ultimate Fighter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're done. You're done. Yeah, and, and meanwhile he was in there with all the heavyweights, and these are the guys who like Brendan and uh, a couple of the other guys. They were all like pro NFL guys. And who, Brendan won the Ultimate Fighter that season, didn't he? Uh, he came uh, in second. Second, I think. Who did he or fight? Did he? he didn't win it. He didn't win it. He was a finalist. Finalist. And then he, he didn't get to the final. Oh, he fought, yeah. It was Roy Nelson season. Roy Nelson mm. won that. Roy Nelson though, like you do these Ultimate Fighter things. You have guys like like Brendan, and you have guys like Kimbo who had like. You know, mm-hmm. e- either uh, low level, kind of like like basic resume MMA stuff, right? And then you have someone like Roy Nelson, and Roy Nelson is like a uh, he's like a Henzo Gracie black belt in jujitsu. He's like three hundred right. pounds, big ass mullet, got a right hand right. from the sun, right? And he knocks people fucking dead, and right. he's got crazy good jujitsu, and he's a fat guy, right? Which means that that jujitsu hurts. Right. There's nothing gentle about Roy Nelson right. and side control. Right. And he had like 50 professional fights when he went on the show. He was one of those guys who'd just been around for so long. Right. They're like, how we, we can't, do you want to just give this guy a contract? But if we put him on the show, he's going to fucking win it. Yeah. So we just let him do that and walk through these other guys. And get some, get some fans probably. Yeah, Roy, Roy starched uh, Brendan. That was one of his, but Brendan got, he likes those football That's guys. That's what he's like. <laughs> that, that's kind of all of them. Like when Brent, there's when Brendan. I don't know if it's the the football background or what, but when he gets, well, just he's a heavyweight, right? And he's fighting UFC heavyweights, and you get hit correctly by anybody. And yeah, you're you're gonna look. You're gonna be a meme. You're gonna turn into trouble at Chonclas. <laughs> So he hit, trouble. Hit, that dude got hit so hard he turned into a meme. He did. They memed him. He memed him. They memed him. That's how much money he owed. Everyone who he <laughs> owed money to made a meme of him. I mean, uh, don't go to <laughs> open mics when you owe comedians money. Uh, you might get knocked out. I was just thinking he's got to be, when I saw he was over there, because my experience with him is just the Diaz Mackey story, where after Diaz was on this show, <laughs> Diaz like, yo, Trouble owes me money. I'm like, who don't he owe <laughs> money to? 
He's like, hey, instead of taking me back to my house, we take me to the He Harold and place. Kumar, dude. I was about to say, there's a movie where this happens. It's dude, like fucking Harold I, and Kumar. Got, <laughs> He's Neil Patrick Harris. <laughs> I got Harold and Kumar by Diaz Mackey. Diaz Mackey. So it wasn't, as, wasn't as much fun. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like a fun Peach 13 comedy. It was a, a terrifying experience. Yeah. Oh, man. I wish they, like, licked my poultry and jumped out of the car, man. It was <laughs> right. <laughs> Boy, they, they should do a remake of Harold and Kumar starring Diaz in Trouble. That is a... Diaz in Trouble, go to White Castle. <laughs> <laughs> Diaz in Trouble, go to Alcatraz. Go to Alcatraz. <laughs> <laughs> They're there already. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Have a, a buddy cop movie with Diaz, Diaz Mackey. Trouble. That is, that's, a good, that's a good team. <laughs> I can see Diaz being like the commissioner who like yells at everyone. When, yeah. they, when they they get bad, they blow up. Like 21 like, Jump Street style? Yeah, like yeah. they blow up Ice a neighborhood. Cube. Yeah. But then I could see Diaz too, like, like the old, like the, the veteran, the veteran cop who's just barely hanging on. Yeah. I don't know, man. Diaz, I think Diaz would be mixed up in, in nefarious police stuff. <laughs> You he, gotta write this movie for him. He'd he loot the evidence room. Diaz, have your people call Day's people. <laughs> we're gonna get the script going. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing that, man. Thinking about I know where like, trouble is. Someone can get someone do smoke signals to find trouble. <laughs> yeah, he, make sure that, pay him up front. He's got debts. <laughs> <laughs> right, dude. That was that was so. Um, you weren't there for that, right? No, I wasn't there. Thank God. So recently, so there's a guy who's promoted because uh, you you've only been here for a year. Right. I've been here about trouble. He also, like, I want to make it clear, he paid me. Anytime he booked me, he paid me. But I caught him, I think, at the tail end of his, uh, you know, his run. Yeah, yeah. I feel like the run's over. I feel like yeah. The, oh yeah. Once you get knocked out, the run's over. <laughs> <laughs> You can't continue to run once you're a meme. Memes right. don't have legs. Ooh. <laughs> he, uh, so there's this guy. He's like a club promoter DJ guy, right? Yeah. He's like a just all around like guy. Jersey he just does a, does a bunch of different stuff. Hustle. And and he promote. He's been promoting comedians, but then a lot of them he has just not paid them. I yeah, guess that's what I hear. I've been hearing about him not paying comedians for since I started mm. for like four years. I'll put it to you this way: when I first moved to one of my first nights, I was hanging out with a comedian, and he took me to a mic and he gave me a taser and said, that's in case trouble tries to fight me. Wow. Because <laughs> he was expecting to fight him. He's like, a, what? so there's been like multiple comedians planning to fight trouble. Yes, <laughs> yeah, for real. That was a year ago, so. Trouble is. Hey, uh, your debts, guys. Trouble is M. Bison. Yeah. Everyone's just like planning on, they're the winning. Look, if everything goes well, I gotta have a showdown with this guy at some point. Right. Got to get my fireballs on point. It was uh, so it was a dark and stormy night. So yeah, he uh, we we're at Chocolate's Cantina, the show that Trez hosts, and uh, Lex Las Vegas is out there. And mm-hmm. I look up and I was like, "Who is this guy?" And be like, "Oh, that's Trouble. That's the guy who was like in my car that one time with Diaz." And I didn't. He had his sunglasses on. He was talking. And he was like. Like, just, I don't, he's, he's, when people are like, hey, man, don't be that guy. Ooh, yeah. Trouble is that guy. Mm. He is 100% that guy. And I don't know the guy personally, but I've picked up enough. Anyway, the point is, is that one of the comedians who he owes money to got in his face. A, the story goes, this is, I'll just, I'll go with the official narrative. Right, right, right. I, right. I've, I've, you hear things. But and everything we're saying might be true, might be, might be joking. There might not even be a guy named Trouble. In there, case anybody who's in law enforcement is listening, you know, it's uh, not. It's all all copacetic. Yeah, I, I would be, you know, I, I don't think that anyway. So allegedly, what happened? One of these comedians confronted him, and then he didn't like it, and sucker punched that comedian, Bow. and a scuffle ensued, mm-hmm. and then dot dot dot. Trouble is. Knocked out like by somebody else. Another person intervened. I like believe. Like Tyron Woodley, he was like, like I heard it was like <laughs> oh, that. Like down. I heard like bah. down, like hit his head, like. But it was two people. One person in trouble, and then another person intervened. This third person intervened, and that's who gave them. Bow. So I have heard. Oh, so you've heard? Yeah. So I've heard. In fact, uh, yeah. but. You know, I wasn't Allegedly. there. I, I, yeah, it's all alleged. I was not right. there at the Me time. Neither. 
I was there earlier and then heard that happen later. Right. But that's a uh, you know karma. I that's guess Las thing. Vegas comedy, baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you will get knocked the fuck out. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. trouble's the third person to get punched at an open mic here. We got. Jake. He's the only one who deserved it though. Tro- there's trouble. I don't know. Jake probably deserves it for something else. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, what are the odds? Oh, man. What are the odds that Louie wasn't just sort of like a messenger from, from <laughs> right. Jake's past? You know? I, I, I mean, I, karma's my, real. My belief is that nobody gets punched unless you need to get punched. Like, right. I, I was a professional fighter. Never ever was in a situation where I was like a punch needs to happen right but every time you hear about someone getting punched Something you're like happened. there's probably a reason that you got punched right like it's, you, it's why a huge, were you there? there's a clear escalation point where you go and now it's fists yeah like <laughs> and it's usually agreed upon that it was like yeah that deserved that have you ever been in a fight like a street Mm-mm. fight or no. a, you had I'm a, a talker yeah and then people don't really like to people pass over me I'm not. I'm not a person that people target, nor am I a person that's targeting others. Really, you 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 don't have a uh, yeah. You have you have a you have a strong presence, but a a, a very like calm demeanor. Yeah, like you're kind of you you have a you're not you're not so big that you're intimidating. You're not so small that people want to kick you around. You're right, like, you're right, like, perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right you're in the like middle. Goldilocks. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Goldilocks zone. Right. Goldilocks and the intimidation factor. For, for me, I, I attract weird attention because people, especially when people who are not fighters but who fancy themselves as like tough guys, mm. they realize that I am a real fighter. Right. Or I was like, there is definitely a time when I would get like broed on by. Ugh. By just by by that dude yeah. at that bar, you right, know what I mean. Right. And sometimes it was the guy who was like, "He's going to jail in two hours, guy." <laughs> like this right. dude at the bar, you know, yeah. he's got the weird energy. But it's all this weird insecurity. The worst place was in D.C. Mm. I cornered a buddy who was fighting in the UFC. Shout out Cody McKenzie. Uh, me, him, and Fitzy all lived together. That's where mm. the that's where Paprika came from. Oh really? Yeah, because I would talk too much. <laughs> and they'd be like, shut the fuck up, Hewlett. And then I would get mad because yeah. I didn't have awareness. Right. And uh, I would just annoy more. Right. And so, but then I realized I don't want to be a social pariah. Let's have a code word. Okay. That Paprika. You can just work in. When you're yeah. talking too much. This is my safe word for shut up. Well, I mean, if you listen to Paprika, you should expect you to be talking. That's That makes sense. I think it's a good, good name. But I didn't get this shirt because I, for the podcast, I told my mom about this this kind of fun thing oh, and yeah. then my family started buying me paprika shirts oh really i think they had been waiting for an opportunity like this to tell you to shut up to really 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 hammer that home all right mom and dad so while well, we're on a podcast yeah so you get them on a podcast yeah that would be interesting my mom's gonna come visit i think in october oh yeah maybe i should do that that'd be interesting yeah I did um I did a podcast when I first started it was like 2013 and 14 when yeah. I was I started doing podcasting but I built a studio in a, a knapsack you know, on the back of a moped in Thailand really <laughs> which is how it's done okay? yeah 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 that's how you do it <laughs> you don't want you it's it's just too easy to be successful at podcasting if all the plugs match right I gotta have at least three countries worth of plugs right you know for exactly. it to be or it's no challenge you right. know what I mean were you in Thailand uh, for kickboxing I was coaching mixed martial arts mixed martial arts wow so they got really good kickboxing but they don't really have good wrestling or jujitsu or at least at the time they, it's a yeah. lot better now it's several years later right but at the time the uh, Southeast Asian scene, which is where people think about martial arts being like the home of martial arts, but all the MMA athletes there, Brazil, American, or by American, I include like Canada and right, stuff, right. and Mexico, and, uh, and now Europe is caught up, England first, then like Sweden and uh, Ireland, you know, the UK is big, you know. Mm. But, but anyway, but you've seen it expand. Asia has hit, got it last because. I think because they're so traditional, there's a lot of right. dogma. It's like religion. Right. You know, so if you come in with some new shit they're like, what? that makes a lot of sense but doesn't go with the traditional stuff, then right. you'll have like politicians come after you. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, you have people who their business depends on stuff staying traditional, but I'm like, dude, you're getting choked. Right. You got to learn not to get choked. Right. And you guys obviously aren't that good at it, but I mean, they caught up too. Now we got the leech. Uh, 
Li Jingping, mm. uh, who I actually coached for his first UFC fight in oh, Bangkok. Really? Yeah, his coach brought him to Bangkok and found me because there weren't a lot of like real serious MMA people in Bangkok living there at the time, mm. and I was there. And he grabbed me, and I actually knew. Crazy story, dude. All this stuff is all, all this stuff is like connected. My buddy Musa. Holler at Musa in Atlanta. He was uh, my. He's an American, but he was in Bangkok as well. And he, I cornered him. Um, I cornered him in China, and hmm. we go to China together. And it was like a straight up, like '80s action movie, because hmm. we're like land in the plains, just these two Americans. Two Americans and just then, cutting it up. And then we rush see, hour. We see these kind of. We see the bus load. It's more like like kickboxer or something. Like, oh really? We see the bus load of the the Chinese team, and I uh-huh. mean team. They had jumpsuits. Damn. And everything. Yeah, and we're like these two guys who just these two Americans got off a plane from Thailand. Hilarious. Anyway, the guy who he's fought, he fought his coach got in touch with me afterwards because we're all hanging out with Chinese triads drinking and smoking right. cigarettes in a room anyway afterwards that's what you do in China after right. fights nothing illegal anyone who's trying to get a piece of that Chinese money yeah. like they're washing money right that's my what I from living over there five years and really? working over in China people they just print money washing money hmm. if it's Malaysian Singapore Kuwaiti if they're hanging out, they're, they're trying to get a piece of that. Because China's economy is fucking crazy. Right. And they'll steal all your intellectual property and whatever. So yeah. like opening up a business there is kind of suicidal unless really? you think you can, like, get a piece of it or you got a hustle going on. Right. Like Some I, type of, you know, inside job. Everybody washes money over there. Really? Everybody. In Malaysia, this is, I ended up working for two different money washers, like hmm. gangsters who wash money. Hmm. On accident, just because that's how common it is right. in Malaysia, and Malaysia is that attached to Singapore. Singapore is not third world; it is highly regulated. Singapore is the financial capital of; it's like the New York City or whatever of Asia, of, Asia, of that half the world. Huh. So it's like Dubai, Singapore, New York, right? You know, and Tokyo, I guess. But like Singapore is like a major one. And so you wash the money in Malaysia where they don't got no rules, hmm. put it in the bank in Singapore. Mm-hmm. And you see the Chinese working their way into society at every different level. Right. Um, and everyone speaks English. And everyone speaks a little Chinese right. over there. So, yeah, it's really interesting. And then there's another one, a bigger one, a fight organization I worked for, that Rebel FC, which is a lot of fun. But they, uh, it was a very spaghetti Western feeling. Really? We're Just doing these shows whatever in China. goes. These big shows in China, these big fighters, like, paying pretty good money for the standard. Mm. And uh, nobody in the crowd. <laughs> we do, like, three of those shows. Nobody in the crowd. Just fight for yeah. us. Yeah. Like, and they, but they have, like, the explosion. They had all of the shit. Really? But nobody there. It's That's very, crazy. Yeah, it's weird over in China. But, uh, yeah, so I got these ideas for these different episodes. That'd be good. Which is uh cool. So anyway, let's talk about uh let's talk about comedy. Let's talk about you. How have you how has your year in Las Vegas been? Oh well it's been a wild ride. <laughs> but it's ultimately I think it was like I feel like it's almost like a good uh desert rehab type situation where I was able to kinda of clear my mind out here for a year, you know, and uh, kind of reset, readjust and that's why I'm moving on to New York. You know? Okay. But Las Vegas was good for that. It was good to like reset. I got to headline Wise Guys, which was nice. That felt like a good accomplishment. I got to yeah. do it on my thirtieth birthday. Congrats on that. That was Thank awesome. Thank you. Thanks man. Yeah. It was a lot of fun. And I guess I put that's on the internet now. Um go check it out. It's thirty. That's the name of the special. You can just type in Jordan Perry Comedy Special on YouTube or thirty comedy special and you'll find it. But uh that was a interesting ordeal because it was my first headlining weekend. So like we had two shows, one on Friday, one on Saturday at 7.30. And uh, I figured I had two shots at recording everything, you know? Yeah, yeah. But the first show, only 15 to 20 people showed up. Okay. So I was like, okay, none of this can be used because there's nobody in the audience. Like, you know, you're fucking... Right, right, right. right. So I was like, okay, uh, this is just going to be a rehearsal. So then the next night, it was like, all right, this is the one take. So everything had to like... You know what I mean? Like you're doing a bit, and he's like, you don't want to go off stage and go, fuck, I forgot that one. Right, right, right. So it's like that was super focused on just like say every part, just say every part. Who cares if it works? Just say it so you have it on camera. You know? Yeah, yeah. That's cool. I've heard uh, some people will do they'll do like three nights or right. whatever. You do like two nights, and you just got to you just you just got to 
keep the best one, right? Well, so no, you, you can, can cut in between, you know, four nights. You, and like, wear the same clothes and then yeah, you just do the same material. That's what I did. I did. I wore the same clothes on Friday, Saturday. But, you know, if you do it... And then also, you know, at the end of a tour is when you shoot a special. So you've done the hour 50 times. Right. So, you know, it's, it's you know, in your bones by then. But this was my little first headlining weekend. Yeah. And then all the footage from the second night. Was that your first time doing an hour? No, but it was my first time, like, you know, it's like practice. It's like if you got to run a marathon, you're going to want to just try and train up to that right, right just go sure. from you know I'm, i've sprinted did the 100 yard dash now let's do a marathon yeah yeah okay so you're um so you've been how long have you been doing comedy oh uh, like 10 12 years now and where were you before las vegas i was in la for like five years oh okay yeah, yeah. all right and la was fun but uh the pandemic got weird people got kind of weird during the pandemic where like everybody went inside and it wasn't like I was here for Halloween, I think in 2020, whatever it was, during yeah. the pandemic. And that was cool because people were out. But like L.A., the exact opposite. I think it's better now. Like maybe like just in the past like six months. L.A. is. People started going outside because there was nothing to do. So it was like even if you were a person who was like, I don't care about the virus. I'm going to go out. There was nothing to do. So stay inside. And right. so everyone's just working inside, then staying inside. No social activities. It made my li- – I, I was doing the podcast today. My actual landlord, who I lived with for a few years, three, four years, never had any problems. Always a normal guy. He had, like, a mental break. He, like, thought his roommate was, like, spying on him. And, like, he like, put a camera in his room. He wound, oh, up, wow. he wound up, like, I think breaking one of the kid's fingers. <laughs> he broke a kid's finger? Yeah. And, like, he was, like, a scrawny kid, too. Like, it was, yeah. like... And it was like, what? I don't even know what was going on up there to where you would think you need to break this kid's finger. Like, <laughs> you know? But, again, he was, like... I think he'd just been locked in the house. And then, like... There's a lot of weird shit that happened during the pandemic, you know? So I think yeah. he just kind of lost <laughs> touch with reality. I, I, my sister started baking bread. She didn't leave the house for like four years wow. or something, or, or two years when the thing started. She's in New York. She, oh, okay. She's a NYU kid. And the thing is, like, staying inside all the time in New York makes more sense than California. Because California is such a, like, it, it's all about this. Na- you got it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Well, that's the thing. You could go hiking and be away from people, but I mean, they people... arrested that dude on a paddleboard, though. <laughs> that's true. I did. They swam out there in the Coast Guard. They arrested a dude on a paddleboard because he didn't have a, you know. That was another thing. It was like I feel like the government got super lame during that time, and they they almost want their goal was to make everyone miserable, so they voted correctly in the election. So it was like, yeah, we could let the kids skate, but we need everyone to be miserable. Yeah, that was the goal. It seemed like it. I, mean, I, I always felt like in jiu-jitsu, there's a... I got to get back on the mats before I talk all this shit about jiu-jitsu. But there's a, if you get someone in a position... Yeah. So it's all about positioning. You get them and say you get past their guard, and now it's like you got them in like a wrestling pen, right? Yeah. Chest to chest, feet's not involved. Right. You know, your feet that way, and just holding them down. Yeah. Side control. It's a very good controlling position. But sometimes they're not going to give up the arm lock or the choke or something, the position. You know, their defense right. is good. It's like, all right, you got me here, but I'm not letting you win. Right. You know, I'm just going to. And so what you do is you call, you do a thing called cooking. Right. And you cook them. You know, right. Which, and which means that I'm going to make this position so uncomfortable for you. Right. That you're going to give it to me just so I'll stop. Right, right. And there's a bunch of different ways to lean on them and grind. Like, somebody, I'll take my chin. I'll. Right, like get it in their their ribs, and right, right, right. And like start giggling, <laughs> like Care Bears. It's hilarious. Right, right, right. Like in my but joke, I get it. You're trying to cook them. And that's yeah. that's what they were they that's, were trying to cook us. That's what I felt the whole pandemic. I was like, we are. This is none of this shit is about what they say it's about. No, we're being cooked for something. But then you had like whatever the opposite of cooking is. I guess that was on the other side where it was like I went to Florida during the pandemic to work <laughs> on a production. Right. Like I was like a production assistant. They get me a hotel. Across the street from the hotel, it's a strip club. So I'm in my hotel room, and I'm looking. I call the strip club, and I go, yo, are you guys open? They go, yeah. I go, like, fully? <laughs> yeah. Are you can get lap dances? Yeah. Like, <laughs> there were people getting lap dances during a pandemic in yeah. a Florida strip club. And I'm like, okay, guys, maybe. <laughs> like, people are getting sick and dying. Well, it was interesting how different places handled it different, and then you looked at the the people that were in charge of making the decisions, right? right. And you have like DeSantis versus Newsom. And right. It's like this night and day. But then you also have the fucking uh what are the 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 Italians up in New York. Right. Like, Cuomo. This, <laughs> Cuomo. Cuomo sexuals. Yeah. Man. And uh there's the, the nursing home mandate. Yeah. Right? But what I saw from the beginning, because again, like I I have 
the news is not reliable. No. In fact, if it's on the mainstream news, it's almost a hundred percent going to be spin. E- either, either. Well, okay. Who's if if there's a major thing, we hear an explosion and we see a big ass plume of smoke come out of the Bellagio. Right, 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 right. I'm not waiting till six o'clock to find out what happened. Right. There's a million ways that we could find out all the information we want, and it's not, none of it involves a dude on a suit on TV. No. That is a irrelevant. It'd be a bunch of people who have no idea what they're talking about spreading misinformation on the internet. Or be people who are there. But the thing, like when the Vegas shooting But even happened. those people, even those people. I mean, I was watching Alex Jones. That yeah. The lady whose kid died, she looked him in the eye and was like, you're a liar. You piece of shit. Right. <laughs> like, even those people, people go, yeah, fuck you. You're lying. Yeah. You were there. Bullshit. I, well, like when the Vegas shooting happened, I was in Malaysia. Really? So I'm just going all through the internet, seeing, talk, looking at friends, friends of friends, Vegas sites and stuff just trying to figure out what happened you hear all this information it's all been like shut down now mm-hmm. but it all came out then right and i'm just saying that we know that now like we know that the information you're getting on the news is it's even if they were trying hard to be super honest it's just not enough information well, that they can give in that time right true you know? and, and then their their incentive is for you to watch well, so here's here's how tv stations work right like i'm sure you're aware of this but how a tv station stays open is ads Right. It's all about commercials. So if you really want the news right now, because, again, we have more news than ever, and yet the news is less demanded forever. So we have increasing supply, decreasing demand. In economics, that equals a government subsidy every single time. Mm. So if you've got a company, like, too big to fail, that shit. Right. That's what that means. So so you have regular laissez-faire, like, economics, where you have, okay, supply equals demand. Right. right. That's why we can always get weed, no matter how illegal it is. Right. Because people, people want it. There's always going to be someone who sells pot somewhere. No matter, you can get it in Texas, you can get wherever. True. You know, it's supply demand. So there's no demand for the news yet. It's been increased. So who's keeping the lights out of these stations? Because they're not making money. You got to look at the advertisements, advertisements in between the news. Absolutely. That's the real news. Yeah. And then you, you can figure out who's paying the bills there or who's got connections. But I mean, I just think we need to all just turn off cable news and honestly like twitter twitter is terrible facebook's terrible i like instagram because it seems to be more it's it's on uh, it's not good but at least people are just spreading outright lies like in like a bad way well it's it, you can't spread propaganda with a photo of your butt right but but what you can do is not have that great a butt and put some filters on it boom 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 find the right angle now all of a sudden you got a good butt that is sort of propaganda it's propaganda too. that's actually worse than QAnon, is it worse? i would say i think these uh, the, the, these instagram girls are like the q anom of, of sexual media i was there's <laughs> a girl who has like so like you know like the profile picture on your yeah. instagram and like i knew this girl in real life yeah. So I'm looking at her profile picture and I'm like, that is not you. Like, right. <laughs> that is not, I've seen you. <laughs> this person is, I don't know how you got this picture, but. I always like, because you see on, on Twitter or something, you're like, how is this girl with her waist and her ass and her face? Like, how is this all like in one person over and over and over and over it, and over again on the internet? And then I'm like, oh, none of them really look like that. It's right. Like, it's the, like the algorithm kind of finds this perfect, bangable 26-year-old. Yeah. yeah. It's the Kim Kardashian thing. Where she has her own Photoshop crew that takes her photo. Right. She does her own paparazzi. Yeah, she does. So That's pathetic. That's and then sad. she, well, I don't know. Like, she's kind of like the Jake Paul of being she a girl. Is. That's like, who Jake Paul should fight next. Yeah. <laughs> Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I would be. She would. He could knock her down, but she just like bounce, bounce back up, boom, just bounce right back boom. up. Or she'd just be stuck there forever, like like until the next event. Okay, like, like <laughs> what if what if Jake plus to fight the entire Kardashian clan, all of them? I would pay for that. I'd pay for that. I'd pay for that. He yeah. might need Tyron Woodley's help on that as he well. He might, yeah, because you know, they, I mean, who else you got in there? You got is Lamar Odom? Is he on the table? You got right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlyn is an Olympic athlete. She's an Olympian. She, That's right. That big old bitch. <laughs> She's sixty two, but she's a fucking Olympian. Dude, you don't you don't get out of shape when you were that good at sports ever. You right. get that, you get that good at sports once you stay good at sports forever. Right. You're always gonna be better than normal people. She's a, I mean she was she was vault. golfing and shit still like I'm like yeah smashing yeah. drives too yeah, yeah yeah I would I would hang out at Top Golf with Caitlyn Jenner would you 
Probably. I feel like she would. Not like on she's a date. She's got to be so. <laughs> but probably. She's like, got to be so, so annoying. Like a networking event. Or just. I just feel like she's so full of herself. <laughs> so full of herself. I can't. I never know what these people are really like in real life, though. Because you probably met some famous people. I've been around some, I right. guess, maybe. In, in the fight game, in the MMA, I found that a lot of people who presented themselves as the biggest heels were mm. actually the coolest people in real life. Right. And some of the people who were like the Captain America, right. like the nicest guys, are actually some of the biggest psychos in real life. Really? And I've heard that the tracks. same thing. Is, I heard that same true is the same thing is true of pro wrestling. Oh, really? And I. I mean, and, The Rock. That seems to be true for him, where he was. The Rock, the wrestler, was kind of, was a heel. Right, right, right. And The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, is an actor, is a nice guy. Everyone loves him. Yeah, he's like... But then there's also, like, in Hollywood, I feel like it can go both ways because everything is kind of fake. Mm -hmm. So when you get into... And local news, like broadcasting, that is the lowest form of... Acting. acting. It's, it's the lowest level of yeah, Hollywood. That's true. And so they're in the same ballpark. They're in the right. same arena. So everything they're doing is fake too. Like my experience in the newsroom is that like this matters and everything else. And these people like the whole thing about being on the news is that you have to be as boring right. and uninteresting You're as not possible. Supposed to be the news. And they're all total psychopaths. Really? Everyone I talk to in the newsroom, they just something very I feel like it's gotta be almost like a high sexual a lot oh, of yeah. like because you're up all night you're always we're in talking your, hookers coke like, yeah like they're they're wild fun <laughs> fun people. people fun yeah but but also in small doses because you realize like they're also like narcissists and they hate themselves like mm. there's a it's it's a weird like um i don't know it's, it's uh how was the example it's just, it's just there's a they want to be actors Right, but they can't. That's also politics to a degree. Politics, yeah. Because they say Hollywood geez. for ugly people. Exactly, yeah. right. But it's all the same thing. Right. And I use the example of if you're gonna, uh, like, what if you're gonna build a wall? Like, you know, you're paying me to build a wall in your yard. I got to build a wall, then I get paid. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the task that equals the money. So, what is the task really? If you're a politician, you're a politician? an actor, or on the news. Uh, politician, you got to make deals. Okay. You got you to gotta be in charge of making sure money goes to the right people. Right. You know what I mean? Probably. And then I think in news, I think it's just, you just got to make sure the news is on. It has to be available. Yeah, like six episodes a day you have to do. There's right. not that much news, so you got to be creative. But that's also what's sad for them is that they're competing with like Twitter and like Everybody on the internet. Where back in the day, it was like Walter Cronkite would be like, "Here's the news," and you watched. Yeah, yeah. Well, people didn't have options. Now people no. have options. They're like these traditional options are kind of trash compared to what we got. Like, but then are you, some people. When was the last time you saw somebody you using a a map like right. a pirate? Trying True. to get to Whole Foods, you know what right. I mean. When was the last time? But then there's people on the internet who are so stupid, and I don't. It, it bothers me how aggressively wrong people are. When there's it's like if you Google this, you could find out and educate yourself. But people right. stick even further into their preconceived ideas of things. And it's like, oh my god. Yeah, the the echo chamber thing has gotten stronger. Yeah, with the because now with you have so much information. Like, you do can you just remember when people. you were a kid? Like, I remember when I was a kid. Back when it was, so it was like Bush, and I remember we all saw kids would kind of we, we didn't have political beliefs really, but like right. we would say my parents are voting for this person, right. and everyone just said it, and it was like I, I, my parents were Democrats, but a lot of the kids I grew up around were conservative, so like yeah. whatever didn't matter though. We all just kind of talked about it, and then once it was done, it was done. Once the election was over, ain't nobody give a fuck who the president right. was. But like now, it's like, oh my god! Like, do not disagree with someone on who they think should be president or have be in a different political party. It's why, why, death. Why do you think the stakes are so high politically right now? Because it is. I remember. I'm with you. Like, I remember when we were like, okay, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean. You talked about it because you were aware. It was like people were genuinely curious, but then yeah. like it didn't matter. Because it's like you can't do anything about it, That's, right? And then it's you know, is it how is it going to affect my life personally? Right. And does it mean anything outside of what I was going to say about Hollywood for ugly people? Is I'll, I'll break it down even more than uh, do a simpler way. You get on stage, you say something that you don't, you didn't write, right? And you get paid. True. That's what 
that's what uh, local lo- local you know catch us on the whatever. Mm-hmm. That's what the local news guy does. That's what politicians do. That's what Brad Pitt does. Right. It's all the same thing. You're you're it's Hollywood, and it's just you get on stage, you say the thing. What do I got to do? And I think politician, you have to maintain the status quo. That also is why you're there. There, you're not there to, you know. There's a reason why Bernie Sanders' revolution never took off. Right. You're not supposed to be the president and be a revolutionary. Can't be shaking stuff up. you got to toe the line. Exactly. Right. Because how did they... Like, the only reason that you even got to where you're at is because you got sponsored by the people who were dependent on you to toe the line. That's right. the only reason... They, they buy you out, yeah. It, it, the whole thing is so stupid. Yeah. Uh, but why do you think the stakes are so high now? Like, it is stupid. We felt like it was stupid before. We feel like it's still probably stupid now, but all of a sudden everything's serious. It's not because we're old. Why Pe- is people it? lost their sense of humor, I think, where you can't joke about shit. And I think people, it is like, it, it feels like a, it's every four years we have a civil war where it's like, you know, it is like North and South, but it is like Democrats versus Republicans and we all fight. Uh-huh. And then it kind of, like maybe right now we're in peace peacetime. <laughs> not it's not the war's not over it's in peacetime I guess I don't know I feel like this is like when the Germans and the Americans all sing like Christmas carols yeah, together right 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 <laughs> we're still like gonna kill you night, yeah. but tomorrow <laughs> so like because I'm telling you oh boy when 2020 whatever four happens or we have another presidential election yeah it's gonna be hot it's again. gonna be real yeah that's I yeah the the I, I wonder if it's gonna get to that point because I feel like things are starting to f- fall off now. We get shit falling off. It like, does fall off. I feel like parts are falling off of the vehicle. Because I think people are right genu- genuinely tired of it. And I think, especially after Trump, you realize, I mean, how how well, how much worse could it get? Like, what what can happen, really? Like, yeah. you could put almost anybody in there, and people will, this, will, this ship will still keep going. Do you feel like it was directly Donald Trump or people's reactions to Donald Trump that made most of the chaos? I think it was him and the phones. I think the phones in particular where it is this outrage culture where everyone is... You take an outrageous president and then put him in an outrage culture and that's what happens. Everything's a powder keg. Everything is always a fight. Everyone... I mean, (laughs) even now I posted something on the internet about uh, the Black Little Mermaid. and I saw that. it, It was funny how many... People were like ready to. They wanted to say something negative. You could tell. You can tell when someone wrote a comment where it's like you had to sit there and think, "What can I say that's you know maybe I can't say it's not funny because people are laughing. I can't say he's wrong because that's actually correct." Or blah 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 blah. blah, blah. But they try and find what what can I say to hurt this person? Right. And it's like, what? How much time and effort are you putting into that? Oh, we're a mermaid. It's a mermaid right, joke, right. man. Like just move on with your life. The Black Little Mermaid is an interesting. It's interesting to me that certain issues will pop up, and it doesn't make any sense for it to pop up. Right. Like no one freaked out when they made the Cry Kid Black. <laughs> that was a great movie, actually. You know that I mean? was a really watched, good one. I watched it. It, it was, was really, not a bad movie at all. It was really good. Jackie yeah. Chan's amazing. Jack, yeah. Uh, but you know what it is? I think it's like, it's. It also is a lot of people are. I feel like perhaps people our age aren't realizing you're not a child you know like I, I see this a lot of time on YouTube where it's adult men talking about how they these movies suck they're talking about like Marvel or the Black Little Mermaid I'm like you're 34 man like you man, man, man these movies aren't for you but he like has an hour long YouTube video about why these movies suck now it's like Jesus Christ <laughs> yeah, I, I, but what? But what is? It? I remember there was. I, I I feel like there's manufactured dogma. Right. I think that that's a big part of the problem. I think that's because we have news that is sponsored slash subsidized by some entity that right. does not have our best interest. Right. In, in, they they they're not they're not down with giving us the best information because they didn't. You know what I right. mean? Like that's the whole thing. Like they got the ticker on deaths, and you know the books are cooked. You know the numbers, the death numbers were cooked. Right. The case numbers. You know the testing was off. Right. None of that shit. All, and then they didn't even start acknowledging that all the information was wrong mm-hmm. the whole time. It actually mattered until the beginning of this year when everything was basically wrapped up. Right. That's when they. That's when they changed the the PCR tests. That's when they uh, stopped doing the ticker. That's when right. now it's all about. <laughs> we, and now crazy. we have stuff like climate change. Now we had we had that one with uh, stop Asian 
hate like there's right. a whole bunch of well i think it is i, I think it's it's, it's it's like what we were talking about you're you're sitting there racking your brain trying to think about how to get into this algorithm flow and that's right. what everyone's doing. Oh, Even CNN is sitting there doing the same exact thing you're doing. Going, how can we get into this algorithm? Who are people talking about? Lizzo? They're talking about Lizzo? All right, fucking throw Lizzo story Dude, at him. Dude, how is Lizzo the most uh, controversial, you know, fat lady in <sighs> media? Her, her music is good. And, and is it because she's like, her backup dancers are fat and she had a reality show I for think that? it's because it's like a little bit like, you know. Okay, so it's like. I put up a joke about the Black Little Mermaid because I know it was something people would get angry about. You just try to tap in that algorithm. Tap into it. She knows if I do. shake my fat ass, bah, 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 there's going to be dudes go, oh, and okay. then now she's back trending. I mean, it. You uh, these algorithms model our behavior. Uh, is, it, is it chicken or the egg, though? That's just sort of the same thing you were saying about Trump, which is yeah. an argument I've heard a lot, Which and it does make sense. I mean, you've never had a... a uh, we never had a president who tweets no. and, and talks shit. Like, talks crazy. Talks like a crazy person. Like in the middle of, like I love. Uh, you've seen Shane Gillis. Yeah. His bit about the debates. Yeah, yeah. Dude, so, but yeah, where it's like these are like serious politicians. Like forty mm-hmm. years, and Trump shows up. Right. Like, hey, what are we talking about? Right. Like, fucking, I'll talk about that. Right. Your wife is a dog. Right. Yeah. Rosie <laughs> O'Donnell stinks. She stinks. <laughs> Fucking crazy. Ted's wife, enormous bitch. <laughs> I mean, that's the part. That was the part that I thought was really crazy was how he insulted Ted Cruz's wife, and then Ted Cruz was calling for him. Yeah. After he like, wow. Toe the line. Toe the line. Toe the line. He's tapping into that algorithm. <laughs> right. The politician algorithm. That's what they got to do. That's true. He wants to stay in line with his party. Is it just about money? Okay. Okay. I remember a line from. It was from. House of Cards uh-huh. and Kevin Spacey says I will never understand people who choose money over power huh. right and this is the guy who's trying to be right. a politician or whatever trying to be president. and when people talk about these politicians or the pandemic right. or any of the, the controversial the news all this shit right. social justice issues uh, it, if, if you were to Look at bottom line what's good for us versus what is not good for us. A lot mm-hmm. of this is negative shit that's kind of pumped and inflicted upon us. Absolutely. Like we're not, it's not organic. You know no. what I mean? No one's like, hey, let's go get that Asian guy that lives next to you. Like, right. what the, that well, doesn't it makes, make it, any it, it sense. It all makes everyone more insecure, angry, and uninformed. It, uh, all three very terrible things. But I think for the power of money thing, I think. It depends on where you are on the scale. Right. You seem like a person that you don't care much for power. You don't need to lord power over people. Right. You know what I mean? There's some people who do. Yeah. <laughs> they absolutely, that's what they're here for. It's like, I was talking to a podcast the other day, and we are talking about, like, why do people do regular jobs? Like, you know, just a job where you clock in, clock out, you make a certain amount of money a year, and you're just on the path. It's because yeah. for some people, they want to be able to go, well, I've been here 10 years. You've been here four. Mm, I have six more years on you. Yeah. Which means I'm this much more than you. And trust me, when you get to year five, that's when things start to make sense. You know, right. those, there's people who live for that. Yeah. Dude, I, I totally do that, too. I do, I do, I do it with, like, uh, with comedy and with jujitsu. Like, that's different. Those are art forms. So I think it's... Because that's asshole, not... that's not be an art form. But that's not power. That's more like a... You care about art form. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how... I mean, fucking how long has jujitsu been around? <laughs> the, the modern version like 20 30 years really yeah the actual jiu-jitsu the version that we have is uh and not to strike too much but basically yeah. the brazilian the gracie style yeah yeah showed up in america with the ufc because oh, the UFC, okay. uh, ufc was originally an infomercial for gracie jiu-jitsu really? that's how it was designed well and maybe jiu-jitsu is a bad example but anything but, that's but, been but, around for a long time well it, it came from a different uh, style of judo, jiu-jitsu, and catch wrestling that had been around for, you know, right, long time. Right. So it's like you know people who spend their entire lives working at this art form. It is an art form. They care about it. You know. Yeah. It's not like who gives a fuck about you know. I worked at a fucking factory where we built slot machines, but people would have that attitude of like, I'm a manager, general, regional, whatever the fuck, uh, like bullshit. Yeah. Well, you don't give a shit about slot machines. You just care that these many people are below you in this factory. That we could right. be doing anything. 
It could be a big deal. I think that'd be cool if I worked at a factory and I had like, you know, people I could say, all right, you, <laughs> you know. You, yeah. Hey, you need to produce more sprockets, Watson, or whatever. Yeah, maybe. Me and the sprocket plant. I feel like you're here doing this podcast because you want to. You want it to mean something. You don't want to just be making sprockets. I'm just trying to get. I'm just trying to spread the word about my sprocket factory. That's sprockets. what I'm working on. Get yeah, the sprockets out there. I only know it's sprocket because that was the name of the dog on the Fraggles. Is that well? Hold on, because here's the thing. <laughs> I think you're not that kind of guy because you just said we're in the car right here. You said you were a substitute teacher. And you don't give a fuck. You yeah, can, that's literally a job where you get to lord power over, over people who can't do shit. <laughs> the, the, the people who can't do shit in the substitute teaching situation are the substitute teachers. We are. Right. But those kids, you know what I mean. They're kids. Being a substitute teacher is like the prison guard going to work and mm. then locking himself in a cell. And then locking that's, himself in a cell. Yeah. <laughs> and then getting shanked. Like that's, really? That's, you don't think you could, you could, you could, you could, you could command respect if you were well, like. Here's the thing. Uh, you have, the kids don't, the kids are like actively, like the project for the day, yeah. if you're a, you have a substitute, right, is to get away with as much bullshit as humanly right. possible, as I'm sure you or anyone else remembers with their substitute. Because these right. substitutes come in. We had this one substitute, man. This lady had one eye. It was <laughs> looking off this way, and we didn't know if it could see anything or not. She was like 300 years old, and yeah. she would she would like shake, <laughs> like when the Dracula's right. trying to get back to the trying to get back to the casket, you know, when he got fucked up by whoever and he's like a uh, half of it. And she was barely a human being. Right. She was ba- and she was, and we were just like, it, it was, it was like if someone had like, a like got a bulldog to substitute a class and he's just they're like, all right, well that's over there. Are we? Like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, it's, we didn't know if she's awake or right. asleep. She's just like in this, she's like in this, uh, this in between dimensions mm. dream state of reality is a real Rick and Morty. And we the substitutes like they don't give a shit about you. Right. The best thing about it is you can't get fired, but you only have one option for discipline, and it's nuclear. What is it? It's we call your parents. They have to quit work Ooh, and come, come get here. you, yeah. and probably beat the shit out of you. Right. So you can vicariously get kids beat the fuck up. Right, but, you but know also what? You you're know a what? sub. You know what? There's what? some substitute teachers who go. <laughs> Yeah. He gets to get beat by his parents if I do that. Well. <laughs> there is one or two kids where I'm like, man, I, I hope their parents beat them because they, if, for me, the kid, if you have, you don't have any recourse. Like you can't of get course, them, you no. can't, you, but also you can't get fired. Mm. Like I can find fucking Dylan in the park and knock him off his bike after school. You know what I mean? Like right. I don't work here, dog. The supply demand right. is way too high. <laughs> right. They will. But you don't. Me you don't. You don't feel the need to do that. You go. I'm gonna go home. I don't care. Yeah, Again, no, and I think everyone relates to that idea of wanting power. But then there's the people who go. You know what I mean? Like I'm not gonna go through the effort to acquire it. Right. Think about how much shit you have to eat to acquire that much power. Yeah. It's like, fuck yeah, that. Well, that's, it's a weird job. Clark County is a bad school district, though. Yeah. I mean, it's just like they they didn't give any of that weed money to... I, talk, I talked to an accountant yeah. from Carson City, yeah. and I was like, I worked as a substitute, but I don't think that that weed tax actually went to the schools. She's mm. like, well, what we did was... Uh, like it, this is the woman who fills in the boxes. Really? She is an accountant for Clark County. The, for Clark County yeah. in the in the, in the school. Carson City, yeah. And she said for the board of education, and she said they took up all the money from the casino taxes that they usually have for schools. They put that somewhere else, <laughs> and then they put the weed money in there. So they oh. so they were just they moved it around. Right. So they like technically did what they said they're gonna do right. but they didn't get any more money to the school it wasn't extra money it was this replace the fund guess how many substitute teachers clark county needs every day has every day every day how many no 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 not has needs needs uh, 2000 yeah like 2000 every really? day that's how that's many, a lot of people guess how many they got like 500 <laughs> That, that's right it's fucking crazy so Damn. if you're a substitute teacher do you i you would have to I like, saw them advertising for substitute teachers on Craigslist. Here. Yeah, you want seventy dollars yeah. to be treated like shit for six hours straight. Right. You know what I mean. Well, I believe uh, that. Uh, so you know, Las Vegas Academy. Mm. Las Vegas Academy is on Fremont, so downtown okay. Fremont. There's Las Vegas Academy. It's a big school. You'll see it if you ever like downtown. 
Uh, it's on my ghost tour because I do like tour guide for like a ghost tour and um, over the haunted museum. Yeah, right. Um, but not the haunted museum, but like that area. But you do, you do the ghost ghost tours. For yeah, that? for uh, oh, but not, cool. not 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 Zach Baggins. Right, right, right. And uh, we were talking one of the stops Dude, is Las Vegas Academy. About, go on. You so should you should I, know. I, I, I want to know about the ghosts of Fremont Street, but it, tell, tell me your story first. There's so uh, on Las Vegas Academy, uh, the steps when the steps were being built, like back in the day, the mob killed a lot of people. And when the city's being built around you, you have to find creative ways to hide bodies. So when the school to Las Vegas Academy, when the steps were being built to the school, they would find the nice security guard and say, "Hey, you seem like a nice guy." I need you to be gone tomorrow night for 45 minutes, just 11 to 11.45. Yeah. Here's 100 bucks, buddy. Take off. So next day, you're gone. They take a body, throw it in the steps that are being constructed, bury it. In the concrete. Or they just pay right over it. Yeah. They did that 14 times. There were 14 bodies in those steps. Damn. And think about it. Kids are just for decades just going to school with like oh. some guy like, ooh, like right there. That's so crazy. I, I heard a similar story. Not that's pretty epic though. Fourteen. Fourteen's a lot, and that's the, that's just in the steps. There's more bodies on oh, the property. I, I was always like, how many skeletons and pinstripe suits do they dig up <laughs> right. every time they're trying to build a CVS? Right. You know for, what I mean? But for real, that is what I learned from doing the tour. Is that everywhere, everywhere, especially downtown, because that's where old Vegas was. So like all the mobsters that built this city, that's where they were. Yeah. Doing shit. They're throwing them in the river or in the, in the lake. lake. We're finding them in Lake Mead now. Mm -hmm. uh, I was talking to a woman. She was a regional director or whatever, Starbucks. So when they make a new location, she and when they renovated the Tropicana, really? she said that they had to replace the refrigerator or whatever. And in the concrete, they found three bodies. Woo! In the yeah. Three bodies built into the Tropicana. And that's just the Starbucks area of the Tropicana. Right. Which is a type... God knows it's right. actually built into right. Like, it's like it's like imagine like because people have having trouble like listening. Imagine if there were three bodies in this apartment. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, like that's a lot. <laughs> that's a lot. So there's way too many corpses. Yeah, I'm gonna get in trouble with my everybody. Like like this. Yeah, about two and a half. You're like, like Je Jeffrey Dahmer had 17. <laughs> and the steps and looks like it's getting a 14. Yo, have you seen that that series yet? Watched I watched it? one episode. I couldn't watch anymore. The first episode. Yeah, that shit first was too much. So fucking intense. Dude. It's intense. You are that guy in that apartment trying yeah. to get out the whole like that. Yeah. That it's, it's, it, it was. But here's so the thing for me, because I I'm, I watch those shows and dot movies, and I'm I guess I'm a victim blamer. I mean, because the whole time I'm thinking, mm -hmm. also I want to find a line where I would not be there. Hey, you're a homophobe, is what you are. <laughs> <laughs> not the homophobe part. Hey, he's in the, the LGBT community as well. All right? Here's the thing. Just I, he's well, actually, here's a part. Because I go, okay, so you're a dude trying to pick you up, right? You're about yeah. to suck this dude's dick. Before okay. he brings you to his place, he goes, what's your name again? I think I'm about to suck your dick. You should know my fucking name. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. I'm not going to your place. Like, are you crazy? Yeah, or or the his entire apartment smelled like a that was dead the thing. body. Right, because literally he goes, he opens the door before he goes in. He goes, "What's that smell? I'm not gonna fucking go inside of an apartment that reeks to suck somebody's dick." But again, man, stop thirsty. This guy was for dick. Dude, I I won't hook up with a girl if she's got cats and have a litter box in the bedroom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like like I've I, done that. I Let's take a clear then. I I, I I hooked up with a girl once, and the only place that we could we could get some privacy was like in her house in her bedroom she had a cat right and I just remember that whole that whole experience just smelling cat Ugh. just smelling cat bathroom oh she didn't wash it or well, like it was, keep it clean whatever it was it smelled it was it felt feline-ish and it was just a but, I, but, 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 the thing. but I'm just saying that's that reasonable like, if she had not even a whole body, just like a, an arm, right? You know, just in, 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 the, in the in a the face or in the the Dahmer thing. Here's what got me was the because okay, let's say he doesn't know your name and you still are gonna suck his dick. You get to his place, it smells like a literal dead body, and you're still in there. He does the drink and he goes, "Here's a drink of water." It's fizzy, and he looks at it and notices it's fizzy, but goes, "Oh well," and drinks it anyway. I'm like, okay, yeah, dude, you deserve to die. You're an idiot. You're a dummy. Don't. Drink fizzy drinks from strangers. Everybody. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually a very good point. Now, now I'm kind of thinking like that guy had a comment. <laughs> hey, like, come on, man. I think you convinced me. <laughs> it's so it's a it's a well made show though. It is really good. It's very creepy. This is something I realized recently is that the uh, demographic of uh, 
the Karen, uh-huh. right? Or uh, Karen is the 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 real white N word. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah. The point, real right? white N word for well, only for white ladies. It's only white ladies. But they would just say like, "Oh, he's being a man, Karen." Who? Like, I don't know. I've seen like full male people just they the guy it. the guy with the drink. No, they tie. I'm just saying they title it. This is no the, the in the internet. Oh yeah. Where they're talking a video of some dude being an obnoxious pussy about something. They say, right. oh, here's a male Karen. Here's a male Karen. Blah, blah, blah. Hmm. Like, because the thing is, like, people get too, uh, too uh, confrontational. If you, if you get into, what, what is it? You would be like, oh, this is, this is white privilege, or he's just an entitled asshole, or right. blah, 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 or this is a policeman, whatever. Say, no, right. here is a dude going full Karen in the mall. Who is? No, I'm just saying that's how they would title it. So it's like they call a guy the Karen too. Oh, okay. It's a it's a an omnisex. I don't know. I've never seen a male Karen. I I believe they the trouble might be a male Karen. I, trouble? <laughs> I, I don't know. No, because here's the thing. Here's the difference between a Karen and I actually don't know. You the never guy. see a Karen talk. get knocked the fuck out. That's why they're being a Karen. Male Karens probably get knocked out all the time. All right, that's what happens. <laughs> that's why they, they don't. They never. They never reach Karen. <laughs> you. You gotta earn that, right? But uh, my point is that the the demographic that you would classify as a Karen, yeah, is the same demographic that is currently kind of trending in, in the comedy world. As in, like, why do you women love the serial killer shows? Oh, okay. The, the people who are watching the serial killer shows the if, most if, are if, the Karen community. If, if your girl is really into the Dahmer show, run. My girl got me to watch the Dahmer show. Was and, she into it? And she's went to culinary school. She's like, I'm a chef. I want to watch the Jeffrey Dahmer thing. I'm like, I don't know if that's a good idea. Yeah. That's and weird. then she was like, this is really uncomfortable. I'm like, we're okay, watching that's, the whole As long thing. as she expresses discomfort. It, look, you're not a human being if you're not made uncomfortable by that first episode. <laughs> you're Dahmer. He's you the know, only one to go yeah. watch that shit. <laughs> but <laughs> then later it starts getting interesting. I'm, and then I get I get sucked in and I'm like... Like, how are they going to, you know what I mean? How are they going to avail all the information that right. I can very easily Google, but I want to see how they did it. I know? might keep watching it, but it was that first episode was like, whew, Jesus Christ. It, it, I don't chills, need more out. it chills out a little bit Yeah. after the first one. It's kind of a, you know, they kind of did it like Dexter. Right. Because they keep doing these flashbacks to his childhood, mm. but it's also where you've seen the horror movies where everything is uncomfortable like the texas chainsaw massacre right, right. where from the very second you're just it's just off-putting yeah you know and yeah. then the characters are all like you just can't you, you you're off put by the the people who are getting murdered you're off put right. by the the villains like every just the whole thing is an uncomfortable experience right. they sort of did that it's like the texas chainsaw massacre meets Des- dexter times reality right that's the thing that really happened so it's extra creepy yeah Wait, and he was it was such an unbelievable story too. Like, and it really couldn't happen today. You couldn't be a serial killer like that anymore because people have phones. Everyone has phones and everyone's always posting where they're at. So well, you, you can't the, kill anybody. The anymore. cops can just ping you. Ping they can you. just see where you're you were last. That was the part that also got me in the first episode was when uh, the cops come into his room, smells like sh- dead body. Yeah. And there's blood on the mattress and the cops are like, "Let me investigate." Let me look here. It's like, dude, arrest this guy. There's a vat of acid in his room. I don't know. The gays, they do weird stuff. Right. So it's like, it some gay stuff. It's yeah. like, the cop's like, well, this might be some gay stuff. Yeah, that, was, that was the thing that I noticed all the time. Is like He he would use that the yeah. gay thing to like distract people because mm-hmm. people were uncomfortable. Also, the cops, It was during the 80s, too. So AIDS was going around. That's right. The cops were talking about how like I don't want to catch anything hanging around here. Right. So, like you're going to catch like, some of that. <laughs> and just some of the Eddie Murphy aids, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> just floating around in the just floating air. around. Yeah, that was uh, like, but so so he sees the the blood on the mattress. He's like, that probably came out of an ass. But I mean, if imagine like, imagine if a cop came do. in here and you had just a bloody mattress and a vat of acid, some yeah. reeks of a dead body. The cops like, this could be just some gay stuff. I don't know. Yeah. Let <laughs> I me. Mean, let me check this out, dude. I would, I would freaking gay chicken you so hard <laughs> in that, that desperate situation, desperate times, stuff. dude. This is just me and my lover. We're we doing gay stream stuff. the whole thing too, just to. It's bloody because it's some hardcore gay stuff. Yeah, it's it's just you know it's just like some, some right. weird gay stuff. Right. If you want to do some gay stuff, the first thing you need is a vat of acid. Yeah, you do. Are you? Are you uh? 
is everything all right in here? It's like, oh, you know, what do you mean? Like, is everyone doing gay stuff in here? Because <laughs> that was how Jeffrey Dahmer responded to everything. He's right. like, oh. hey, hey, are you uh, murdering and eating people? It's like, well, I don't know. What do you mean, like, murdering them in a gay way? Yeah, like, just some like, gay stuff, dude. Doing some gay stuff. Like, just leave me that, alone. Just gay stuff. He had that weird cadence that actor did. He got yeah. glasses like my dad. Oh, boy. <laughs> that, was, that was just a popular style of glasses back then. Just a popular style of glasses. Yeah. That's amazing. Now, my dad owned a cemetery. Oh, really? Yeah, he could have totally buried bodies. But here's the thing. That's also why Donald was fucked up. Was because, like, so your dad is a, owns a cemetery. So I feel like when you work with dead bodies, you're supposed to have some type of respect for them. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, when you think yeah. about people who are, like, crem- cremators or, like, people who do, like, funeral type shit. Yeah. They always are very respectful when they talk yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His dad taught him, like, biology and, like, taxidermy as a child. And yeah. so, basically, before he ever taught him what, like, life was, he was like, hey, look, here's a puppy. Right. Got it. And look at the bones. It's like, whoa. And his mom was a nutcase. His mom was a nutcase, and too. And so, there was... Uh, you know, there's a lot going on, and then who knows how accurate that picture was painted? There could be who knows what kind of abuse. Yeah. Hey, who knows how like how I don't I don't know though. I mean, nobody normal does anything like that. That's why it's so fascinating because so nobody can relate to it. So extreme. Yeah. I mean, the, dude, there's, I don't care how. Because it's like okay, they're serial killers, but then he's like, oh, you think you a serial killer? Well, I fucking eat these motherfuckers. I'm like, okay, some people eat that. I'm like, well, I eat them and I fuck them. I yeah. kill them, bury them, dig them up again, and fuck them. Yeah, <laughs> you into that? I don't even do that to like real food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and kill this, bury it, and eat it again. Joe Rogan had the best. Uh, he had a very funny premise where he said, "You know, I can I can buy a pig, and I can I can take care of that pig, and I can raise it, mm-hmm. and then I can kill it, mm-hmm. and I can eat it. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with that." But it's a problem with me fucking it. Yeah, that's a funny <laughs> bit. Like, what is, like, just from the pig's perspective, what's right. worse? <laughs> I guess they're always they're always thinking that there's no way that you seduce the pig. But what if I got good fucking game, dude? And I seduce the pig, and the pig wants to fuck me. There's there's levels to this. There's levels. <laughs> the, it's like, would you rather be raped or murdered? Okay, hold on. Would you mm. rather be... Uh, it's a bit like, okay, I don't want to be, I'd rather be murdered than raped, right? It's like, but would you rather be murdered by Jeffrey Dahmer? Jeffrey, right. Because that's a, it's a package deal. Package deal. He's going to rape you after he kills you. And then he's going to do more weird stuff to you. Do more weird you. stuff to your body. There was Ed Gain. That was the guy they based the Texas Chainsaw Massacre off. Oh, do you really? know about him? No. So Ed Gain was, uh, oh, he was a weird case where he was, I think he was in a taxidermy. Mm-hmm, uh, which course. is, that's the Texas Chainsaw thing. Right. Right. Uh, he was in a taxidermy, and his mother was crazy religious. Like, mm-hmm. when he's, like, I don't know, grew up long, many, 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 like a couple of generations before us, anyway, really? you know. And uh, he, she was crazy religious, very, like, sexually oppressive and mm. stuff. And it was just him and her on, like, this farm after his father died or something. Really? And then he had really weird, like, like sexual issues and then his mother died because she was older he inherits the farm so no one messes with him right but he just leaves her body in the bed Whoa. he's like jerking off everywhere Whoa. and then he goes and he's grave robbing oh. and building like a woman's suit out of like oh. and then he only killed like two or three people like he, he towards the end yeah he started catching ladies mm. But he mostly robbed graves. But that's Ed Gain. That's the only thing as weird as Jeffrey Dahmer that I can think yeah, of. Yeah, I think... Because even Bundy was like... He was just killing women and then like raping them, I think. Or no, he would dig up the bodies and fuck them too, I think. Ed Ted Bundy? That, I think he did. Now, I don't know why all of a sudden the fucking... If the fucking co- cosmos is making me want to geek out about these serial killers now because <laughs> the algorithm, dude, the algorithm. We're in the fucking matrix, man. Right. I just got. I didn't even get hit with an idea. I got hit with a computer virus. And right. It got into my head. Yes. Like that keyboard cat. How long have we been talking? <sighs> Hour thirteen. Oh shit! I right. think I gotta bounce because I gotta still pack and leave for New York tomorrow. Yeah, man. All right, so. Uh, Cool. Well, we could obviously talk for a lot longer, but how about um, if I figure out how to do anything remotely, we'll, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll follow up. I want to hear about your trip. So you are going to go pack your stuff in a U-Haul. Right. Drive a fucking U-Haul. Drive to the Bronx, baby. Boogie down Bronx. 
to the Bronx, and then you got you got a job lined up. Uh, tour guide job. Tour guide yeah, 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 yeah. All right, good. And uh, and with uh, and then comedy, comedy right. in New York City. I wonder what it's like. For someone like you, because when you came on the scene, I was like, you're fucking talented. Oh, thank well, you, Well, you man. came from L.A. Right. And did you do most of your early stuff in no, Boston? No, I did a lot of my early stuff in Boston. So okay. I, did, I did sketch, so improv, you, and stand-up in Boston. Okay, so, so you've just, around, yeah. you've got, your fucking pedigree is what you are. Boston, <laughs> right, L.A., yeah. Vegas, New York. Right, you know yeah, what I mean? I've, been around, I've been around a few scenes. So I'm it, excited to tackle New York. Yeah, this is very exciting. I'm excited for you, man. I'm, yeah. I'm happy for you to, to come on here and talk with me. And, of course, uh, man. Thank just, you for having me. I'll have uh, I'm gonna have some clips, and I'm gonna have. Thank you. And check uh, out the special thirty yes. on YouTube, Jordan Perry Comedy Special on Instagram and Twitter, and at this Jordan Perry. Just find me. I'm out there. That's right. They got the information there. Follow. Uh, make sure to click a sub- subscribe button mm-hmm. on this thing. Uh, you can follow the live streams on Facebook. Right. You can follow the Paprika Show on Instagram, and the main thing is to subscribe on YouTube. That's where we want to get most of our content. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I won't keep you anymore. You got to pack and go, Jordan. Right. Perry, thank you so much for coming Thanks to the for show. Thank you having me. We'll see Deuces. you later. Nice. Yeah, that was easy. Uh, good, like minute, minute fifteen, strong, strong. Uh,